It's a glorious February day and spring is in the air and foals are being born up and down the country at this time of year. So in this edition of the Bloodstock Show, we thought we were going to try something a little bit different. We're going to follow a mare through her last stages of pregnancy and hopefully meet a brand new foal on the ground. Colworth Grounds Farm have kindly let us film this experimental feature with owner Sophie Buckley's Galileo mare, Hanella and the dreams of breeding a promising racehorse are very much still alive as we make our first visit to the yard. That's the great thing about breeding, you know, you can put all the research in, you know, try and pick the best stallion, and it gives you that opportunity to potentially breed the champion. The great thing is we all have a pretty equal chance of making it happen at the end of the day. Hanella was covered by Coolmore Stud's Royal Ascot winning sprinter Star Spangled Banner 11 months ago and all has gone to plan so far as we reach her due date and anticipation of the foal's arrival heightens. It's anxious times and things can go wrong. I think with horses, you know, things that either go very well or they go very badly. If they go wrong, they, they can go very wrong. It's a high-risk project for the reasons Sophie's mentioned, but the farm's vet is on hand and at the moment all the signs are positive. At this point, uh, you know, we've no concerns about her. She is a day overdue, but horses can run very overdue. It's quite normal for them to, have to be two weeks overdue. It's wow. totally normal, so rather than humans have a set date, horses have actually a range of gestation that within about kind of three to four weeks. Oh, wow. So we really are looking out for some vital signs because otherwise we could be up all night for a month trying to work out when she is going to have her foal. What usually happens is the milk, the first lot of milk called the clostrum starts coming out the end of the teats okay. and we call that waxing up, which we use as a sign to think that it's going to be reasonably imminent. How often now are the team here at Colworth checking a mare like Canella? So all day, we just, she's just in a field locally so we can just watch her um, and she's got a folding alarm in. And uh, a folding alarm, just talk us through that. So the folding that. alarm gets stitched into the vulva, one side and two sides and it has a, a magnet through the middle so when the foal comes, it splits open yeah. and then it sets an alarm off, which runs to a SIM card. It rings five okay. numbers, oh, just nice. in case somebody, you know, if the first person maybe was out of signal, it just keeps ringing numbers. So it will be ringing my number and I will be up alongside you, Vanessa. This is going to be an experience of how fast can you get out of bed. Yes, it will indeed be a test of my own speed of getting out of bed, but this is a skill the foaling manager at any stud has a good handle on, as mares going into labour in the middle of the night is a regular occurrence, but the hope would be not to get too involved in the birthing process where possible. It's better not to be too involved, from my opinion, because it just keeps the bonding process between the mare and the foal. Nice, nice, how exciting. Yeah. Here she comes. Here she comes, yeah, right on cue. Sorry, Hanelli, you can't go out, darling. She's looking, I mean, she looks huge. She's big. Like, is that, she's big, right? Yeah, like, I mean, she's got, um, she's got a bit of fluid retention under her stomach, which makes her look bigger. So, yeah. and, that, and that'll disappear once the folding's gone. It's just a pressure build up. It's so exciting. We could see the birth of a champion. <laughs> yes, Rachel's. well, that is it. We're all, that's the great thing about breeding a horse. It, you know, you could breed the next champion. I mean, that could be the next Guineas winner. That's what we're aiming for. And, you know, in our minds, you know, we'll think that on, until the day it doesn't win the Guineas. A Guineas winner would indeed be nice, but at this stage, the team are now waiting for Hanella to go into labor. And as we sail past the due date, it became apparent that patience would be a virtue. Day three, waiting for the foal. And as you can tell, Hanella is still very pregnant. Day four of following Hanella. She's four days over her due date. I did wake up this morning and the girls from Colworth Grounds had sent me a text to say that she had waxed up a little bit. Fingers crossed, Hanella. Tonight might be the night. You never know. So in the last 24 hours, we've got double the amount of milk that we've Come had. On. So that's a good sign. It's all dropped right in her teeth. The tiniest bit of wax. Day seven and no foal, Anella. There's a baby in you. Yeah. We're hoping tonight might be the night. Hey, look at that baby. Her teats are actually dripping milk. That's how ready she is. She's like quite astonishing, really. So she's just 
perfectly ready to spit the baby out but she is just holding on to that thing. So the wait continues. Just because she'd waxed up and then, then started milking, we just thought we'd just have a check where the foal was. And, um, and literally, the foal's head is about this far in. Really? As soon as you put your hand in, you can feel its nose. So if you put your hand in here now, not obviously that yeah. we would, <laughs> literally, like, we're so talking... We did a rectal examination. Yeah. If your hand goes in straight, the foal is... Here. Oh my Just god. Right here. Hanella had her foal in the perfect position, and at the end of a long 11 days, she finally went into labour. Showing all the usual signs that had to be expected, her waters broke fairly promptly, and it wasn't long before we got a first glimpse of her foal. There was a little difficulty as the foal's shoulder was caught on Hanella's hip. But with a bit of manoeuvring and a helping hand from the staff on the farm, eventually, Hanella successfully gave birth to a chestnut filly. And it became clear that the newborn was in good nick as she attempted her first stand, albeit a little wobbly, but she soon got the hang of it. And then she didn't delay in quenching her thirst by suckling for the first time. Once we knew all was well with mum and daughter, we left them to the natural bonding process in peace. I'm back here at Culworth Grounds, just four days on from the birth of our bloodstock show foal. We've called her Sky after Sky Sports Racing, and she's in pretty good condition for a newborn. And as you can tell, She's fairly relaxed. Overall, the birthing process went well, but there is naturally an element of worry with any animal giving birth, especially for those who care about them most. Was it a sort of emotionally draining experience? Yeah, it definitely is. And certainly there was a moment when it was looking a little bit nerve wracking. The foal wasn't coming out, it was a bit stuck. There's that sort of definite feeling of silence, you know, as everybody's working hard to do the best job, to make sure it gets out. And you're just thinking, you know, you just want everybody here safely. And ultimately, you know, the mares mean a lot. You know, Hanella is my first, the first mare that I ever had. And, you know, it's, she's part of the herd. You know, I'm part of her herd really yeah. now. You know, as, as time goes on, she, she knows me, I know her, I'll say hello to her every day, give her a pat, I'll walk by and say hello, Hanella, and she'll nick her back to me. It wasn't all plain sailing, as it became clear the day after her birth that Skye was not very well. Because she was so overdue, she had missed drinking the colostrum, which is the first part of Hanella's milk that provides the innate immunities and essential nutrients to a foal from the mare. Blood tests were taken and Skye was given what is known as a plasma transfusion to replace the goodness she had missed out on. So this foal had a plasma transfusion and we have subsequently taken another IgG and this level is now sufficient. So, we, so you're happy? We, yeah, we have no worries now that this foal will be, um, will be sufficiently protected. And she seems pretty jolly in herself. Very jolly she is, yeah. She's, uh, she was quite a, a bundle of joy to, to do all these things with. <laughs> but that's what you want in a foal. You want exactly. them to be bright and as you're witnessing yeah. here, she's feisty, which is a natural. Exactly, yeah. When they're too easy to do things with, it's usually a sign that there could be a problem. I think some of our viewers will be fairly surprised at how quickly they then have to be put back in foal if you want a foal again next year, yes. which most breeders yeah. do. So the process now, she has to be cleaned up, she has to be checked and scanned and then you can give her the go-ahead to go in for another covering. Yeah, so if you think we have, you know, a, around over 11 months gestation, um, we've, we've only got sort of three to four weeks to get her back in full, or we're going to keep going later and later in the year. So it is important that we, that, you know, from a, from a kind of financial stud side of things, is actually to keep things moving along. I feel a little bit sorry for her, um, but that is nature's way. If they were in the wild, it would probably happen the same way they yeah. come in season and the stallion would cover them so um, you're sort of really just following a natural cycle so the show rolls on for Hanella as her next date in the covering shed is imminent but in the meantime Skye is feeling better and has been out and about 
She's been in the school a couple of times, which she seems to very much enjoy. <laughs> so, and she um, definitely has a lot of fun running around in her box. Good girl. So. You can tell already she's like a feisty one, isn't she? Yeah, she's very strong. Very, very strong. So I'm not, I'm not sure how much she weighs, but I feel like it's definitely more than I do. <laughs> um. well, that's perfect. Hey, Trouble. You're a monkey already. You're a monkey. Yes, you. She's going to straighten up confirmationally, but you're pretty happy with her in general. Yeah, I'm very happy with her. You know, the main thing is she's healthy, and with a bit of time, that will come right. I mean, she's very big and strong. It's the biggest foal that that mare has ever had. Uh, actually, I think it's probably the biggest foal <laughs> we've seen here. She was in there cooking a long time <laughs> extra. For Sky, the ultimate aim is the yearning sales. Yeah. In 2020. 20. Yeah. So she'll be here for basically a year and a half. So it'll be October 2020 that if everything goes to plan, she should go to a yearling sale. Yeah. What will be the process from now until then? Well, ultimately, Sky is an investment. Um, it's sort of hard to imagine this cute, fluffy foal calling her an investment. But, you know, for me, I sort of feel it's better than stocks and shares. You know, you get to really enjoy something, be part of something, you know, follow a whole process. Sometimes it is a little bit heartbreaking, but uh, I always think back to my father and giving me parenting advice and saying, you know, ultimately being a parent is, you know, teaching your children how to fly the nest. And so that is the way I try and look at it with these foals, you know, that is my ultimate aim, to try and give her the best to go and leave us and to go on. And by the best, I don't just mean, you know, the best food, the best stable. It's sort of, you know, getting inside her, what, you know, what makes her tick, what, what's her personality, how can we bring out the best and yeah. give her, you know, give her the, the chance to go on to be a great racehorse, essentially. She's really showing off for us there on that note. So, you know, it's just something a little bit more than just an investment yeah. and you know it's just a great journey to be part of and it's a great privilege really.